Well, trigger warning, you might be offended by this video. Trigger warning, this video might trigger you. Trigger warning, trigger warnings are kind of useless. When I when it would all go down, been a minute, been a while, yeah, nobody it is that you with it. Listen, I don't make my video so a bunch of people will agree with me. I make my video so people will question their reality, question their beliefs, and look at things in a more objective way. I think, you know, nowadays it's so easy to just kind of go along with what everyone else says and what everyone tells you to believe, but we can be progressive and not be closed-minded. Liberals uh, pride themselves in being open-minded and progressive, but once you actually have a different opinion that is going against what is considered progressive or woke, then you get automatically placed into uh, some sort of phobic category. And it's really not that simple or black and white. Being closed-minded doesn't just mean that you hate gay people or that you don't think that interracial relationships should exist. Being closed-minded is just literally having a narrow point of view on whatever it may be. You can still be liberal and be closed-minded. There are plenty of them out there. Anyway, people are gonna disagree and that's totally fine, but I encourage you to free your mind and think critically and question things a little bit rather than just going along blindly with what people on the internet say is correct in the name of wokeness. You gotta remember that as people we have to evolve and you know sometimes we believe something is right and then we evolve and change and we realize you know what I actually don't believe in that anymore. Remember when everyone was posting those black squares during the Black Lives Matter uprise last summer? Well a lot of people thought that was you know solidarity and progressive or whatever but it ended up just being kind of a joke. Anyway, now that I've basically given a trigger warning in some way or another, let's actually get into why I think trigger warnings are kind of useless. I've been thinking about this for a very long time, but I was too nervous to actually say anything on the internet because I just knew so many people would disagree with me. But I was listening to Jeanette McCurdy's podcast called Empty Inside the other day, and she was talking to this woman who wrote a book on bulimia. And towards the end of the podcast, Jeanette said something along the lines of, But I think that the sensitivity is actually hugely destructive and holds so many people back from recovery. People have got to work through these sensitivities and hear some things they're uncomfortable hearing in order to get to the other side. I wrote about these trigger warnings and how absurd they've gotten. And I've said to so many people, if that concept had been around 35 years ago, I never would have gotten into recovery. Why? Because the whole frigging world was a trigger. In the hell does anybody become resilient and gritty unless they learn to deal with uncomfortable ideas and thoughts and whatever? It is absurd. It has set people back so many years. It's bullshit. We're not Fabergé eggs. If you get in recovery, you will have to face triggers. They'll be on television. They'll be when you're driving. They'll be when you're shopping for food. My God, get used to it. Toughen up, people. When I heard this, I was <laughs> at Trader Joe's actually, and I was listening to the podcast, and I just started screaming like, yes! Oh my God, finally somebody said it. I'm really glad that she was the one who said it because she's been through a lot of trauma. She's talked about that on her podcast and other podcasts. And so a lot of people will assume, oh, if you don't believe in trigger warnings, then you've never been through trauma and you don't know what it's like. But there are plenty of people who have gone through traumatic events who don't actually think trigger warnings are effective, and she's one of them. So the way I see trigger warnings is kind of how I see helicopter parenting, because you know, helicopter parents think that they're protecting their kids and they're doing what's best for them, when in reality, the overbearing nature that they have on their parenting style is actually really detrimental to their kid because their kid doesn't know how to make mistakes. They don't know how to fuck up because their parent is too busy trying to prevent anything bad from happening. But the thing is, you have to go through bad things to learn. You have to go through uncomfortable experiences in order to grow as a person. I'm sure you've heard plenty of stories of kids kids who grew up with helicopter parents and then they go off to college into adulthood and they just spiral out of control because they don't know how to handle life without constant rules and regulations and someone looking over their shoulder constantly. Listen, I've been through plenty of trauma. I actually have PTSD. I've sought out therapy for it and all that. So I'm not just speaking out of my 
I am someone who actually has experience with this and I promise you if you have trauma the best way to recover from that is to face your trauma. I spent years pushing my trauma away and pretending like it didn't exist and you know one day I was in a situation where I had no choice but to face it and it was really painful but it was either that or I just would completely go off the deep end and thankfully I chose to seek therapy and facing that fear was the only way that I could get through it. There's literally something called exposure therapy where you get exposed to your trauma or your triggers to help you kind of normalize it in a way and I think that's a great example of how facing your trauma and Pulling back on the whole trigger warnings thing is going to actually be way more helpful to people who have trauma. A part of getting better is confronting your trauma and using coping skills to actually get through your triggers when they come up. And you can't very well do that when everything has a trigger warning attached to it, even if it's something as little as catcalling, you know what I mean? Like you shouldn't have to put a trigger warning for the smallest things. You know, I get triggered by the randomest stuff. I mean, sometimes it just shows up and you have no way of expecting it. So the thing is, no matter how many trigger warnings people put on their posts, people are still gonna get triggered regardless, whether it's online or in real life. I remember I was listening to a podcast and they made a joke that was related to my trauma. And you know, I had no way of predicting that. And it triggered me, but the thing is, I can't get mad at that person because they didn't know that, oh, this joke is actually linked to a specific event in my life that was really traumatizing because one, it's a podcast, how would they even be able to know that? And they can't predict every time someone gets triggered by something. But even then, I mean, people can get triggered by doors, by certain noises, and, and that's why trigger warnings are honestly not that effective because there's no predicting when someone's gonna get triggered. A lot of the times people put the most measly little trigger warning on a post. It's like TW in the corner of the post. At the end of the day, it's not other people's jobs to know your trauma and to know your triggers and then, you know, tiptoe around that, even if they're your friend, but especially if they're a stranger or just some person on the internet, you can't expect other people to cater to that. It's your job to deal with your trauma and that's just life. The thing is, the world is a triggering place and you cannot escape it. I live in one of the biggest cities in the world and best believe I've been triggered just walking down the street. And that's nobody's fault, that's just how life is. The world doesn't care about your trauma. I'm sorry, I know that sounds harsh, but it's true. And a part of being an adult or just a person in this world is that you just gotta deal with shit that is hard to deal with. Everyone has some sort of trauma, honestly. Some, it's more severe than others, but the thing is, if you wanna survive in this world with a healthy mind, then you have to just accept it and, you know, face your triggers head on and just keep it pushing. I understand in more extreme cases where, you know, something like someone being on screen or something really gory going on, I understand why people put trigger warnings in front of that. Again, a lot of the trigger warnings I see online aren't even effective because it's just some tiny little TW in the corner, but there are some things that you really don't have to put a trigger warning in front of, if I'm going to be completely honest. We can't expect people on the internet to coddle us. And speaking of which, read the coddling of the American mind because they kind of talk about this. And you know, I think it's, it's a pretty unpopular opinion, but it needs to be said. I remember once I was in, a, in an acting class and we were reading Stanislavski and in the first chapter he does blackface. And I was the only black person in the room. Everyone else was white. And my professor goes, trigger warning, blackface. And he wasn't looking at me. I think he was honestly trying to avoid eye contact and I was like, who is the trigger warning for? Oh, is it for me? Okay, okay. It was like, all right, I mean, I guess I understand why you did that, but like, what the f was I gonna do? Get up and walk out? I mean, I guess I could have, but that just would have been mad awkward. I think 
the concept of trigger warnings has gotten so out of hand, it, like I can't even take it seriously anymore. And if we create this expectation that we should constantly be tiptoeing around people's potential triggers, then it just creates this really claustrophobic environment where we're too afraid to say things and ask questions because we don't want to trigger someone or offend anyone. But sometimes you just have to do that in order to really get done. I already know so many people are going to hate this video, but honestly, I don't even mind making people mad at this point because it's kind of funny. So many people in my comments say, This triggered me and this was, you know, really insensitive. Like, wow, that sucks. Personally, I don't even think I really say anything that triggering, but you know, people are people, they'll get bothered by the randomest stuff. I was looking at one of my past videos that recently just hit 100k, thank you. I looked at the comments because I was like, you know what? I'll just see what people are saying, you know? This is a pretty positive video. I don't see why someone would find anything outwardly offensive about it, but boy was I wrong. So I said something about how you should make eye contact, right? And a whole bunch of people said, this is really triggering to people with autism. And it's like, okay, I didn't say that if you're autistic, you can't be a hot girl. I'm not autistic. I don't really know that many people with autism. So I don't really know why people were expecting me to talk about that when that wasn't even in my periphery. I understand that people with autism can't make eye contact and it makes them really uncomfortable, but is that really all you got out of the video? Just take it for what it is. Not everything is about you. That's the thing. I feel like our generation is so self-centered and we do it under the guise of, you know, being woke and being inclusive, but it's like, you shouldn't expect people to, you know, try to walk on eggshells just to please you. This is the internet and not everyone has the same experience as you. Not everyone is going to know every single perspective. It's one thing to be like, oh, by the way, if you are affected by this thing, then try this. But to say that what I said was offensive is just completely wrong. People just throw around the words triggering and problematic and it's just completely lost its meaning and we can't even have a proper and productive conversation about things that are actually fucked up because everything is fucked up nowadays. But you know what? I know what kind of videos I make and I know that that's just how it goes. And my videos are not for uh, the faint of heart, I guess. I wouldn't even say that. I don't think what I say is honestly that controversial, but but in this age of wokeness, you can have a lukewarm take and it's like an unpopular opinion all of a sudden. So yeah, buck up, sweetie, because the world's a triggering place and it doesn't give a fuck about you. Anyway, have a nice day. If you took offense to this, congratulations. Your life must be really hard. And